Hey, this is Ross with my partner, Bob. We have a show called Worldview Matters. And Ross, as you know, we believe that everything in life is somehow related to how people view the world around them. Our show is available on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app. Also available on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com. It's the afternoon edition of the Weather Extreme video. This is for Monday, the 28th of January. I'm James Spann. Temperatures tomorrow surging into the low 70s and severe weather seems likely early, early Wednesday. Now, let's get in there and take a look. We'll give you some updates uh, on our thinking for the severe weather event at midweek. First off, sky cam shots around the network. Not a bad day today. The sky has been mostly cloudy. A few breaks in the overcast. That's the Gadsden sky cam. And uh, the sky there is uh, eh, mostly cloudy, a few thin spots. There's our Demopolis sky cam in Marengo County. Very similar sky, broken clouds with some sunshine peeking through. And down south, that's a good-looking day at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab on the Alabama Gulf Coast. Big trough in the west. That's going to kick up a fuss as it moves to the east in coming days with severe weather across the deep south and some winter weather issues up north. Temperatures today are mostly in the 60s. Uh, That's about 10 degrees above average, and tomorrow should be our warmest day of the week. Potential for low to mid-70s in here. I noticed Memphis now at 71. Those were captured at 2 o'clock. And around the nation, look at those 70s surging north into parts of Kansas and Missouri. But uh, back in the west, it's cold underneath the trough where a lot of snow is falling. We've got winter storm warnings in effect for parts of the Colorado Rockies, the mountains of northern New Mexico up to the northwest over parts of Idaho, Montana, Oregon, and Washington. The counties in red in West Texas, that's a red flag advisory for wildfire dangers and winter weather issues up north. New York City, they saw some nice snow coming down today uh, through many of the boroughs there. All right, severe weather possibilities. These are the new outlooks. This is the outlook for the rest of today and tonight. A small slight risk over uh, parts of Oklahoma, including Oklahoma City. But tomorrow, the guys at SPC have ramped up the risk to a moderate risk now for the Mississippi Delta. That includes parts of Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, and far southwest Tennessee. And uh, that is where things could be shaken and bacon tomorrow evening and tomorrow night. In fact, uh, look at the percentages. That that means there's a 45% chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a given point. That is a very high number. Uh, so uh, and the main threat is going to be from the squall line, the damaging straight line winds, but there could be a few isolated tornadoes over there. And then day three, which is Wednesday, the risk moves east. It's the standard slight risk for much of Alabama. And it's a case where the storms are going to be coming through early in the day. The The time changes on these outlooks at 6 a.m. local time, and uh, that's the reason for the gap there. Northwest Alabama may be out of the severe weather by 6 a.m., but that will be keep on uh, – the, the line of storms will keep on moving to the south and east, as you'll see. And the rain for the next five days, the storm is moving along at a pretty good clip, so rain amounts of about one inch likely. We don't think there will be enough rain for any major flooding problems. All right, new modeling – Here we go. The GFS, the 12Z run, valid at uh, 12 noon tomorrow. There's your trough to the west down below that. Notice the isobars are packed. That means the day tomorrow should be windy. Uh, Temperatures reaching the low to mid 70s. The uh, GFS is at 73. The NAM at 75. Wow. Uh, The record, by the way, 78. So we don't expect it to be that warm. And the sky mostly cloudy. You know, there might be a sprinkle or a shower in there, but the better dynamic support is off to the west where uh, big storms will likely form from uh, Dallas up to Tulsa and Little Rock, and uh, those will expand and move east, and they will likely become severe. And then Wednesday, the trough is progressive. And again, this is the look at 500 millibars, and down below that, uh, we note the models are a tad slower on this run. Uh, this is uh, valid at noon Wednesday, and it's got the storms over East Alabama. But let's get in there and look at the mesoscale modeling. This is the RPM, the Rapid Precision Mesoscale Model. And this is valid uh, tomorrow night at midnight. And at that point, the main band of storms is just east of Little Rock, down to about Monroe, Louisiana, and near Galveston Island, Texas. All right, let's go to 7 a.m. Wednesday. Uh, the RPM is slower. Really, all models are slower. It's got the line of storms coming into the Shoals area early Wednesday morning. Uh, but again, this is slower than recent runs. So uh, if this timing is correct, we might have to adjust our timing a little later in the day. Uh, the line is coming through the Birmingham Metro about 11 o'clock Wednesday morning. 
Uh, the line they're running from near Scottsboro to Birmingham to Demopolis. And you can see it's a narrow band, but within that line, you know, you could see some very strong winds. The wind fields are quite impressive, as you'll see. And then by 4 o'clock Wednesday afternoon, the line of storms is down in southeast Alabama, and the show is over for us. We'll check the new severe weather parameters off the uh, uh, latest model runs. This is valid at 6 o'clock Wednesday morning. This is the surface-based instability in the form of the lifted index. Uh, where you see the green, that is unstable air, air that is buoyant. Uh, the really, really unstable air is down in the Gulf. Uh, the, the numbers are not that high, but this is the cold weather season, and that's just the way it works. And you don't have to have a lot of instability for severe weather in the cold season here. We all know that. Uh, we'll look at the uh, lowest level shear. This is the bulk shear between the surface and 925 millibars, very low level. And uh, the better numbers are a bit out of phase, but if you look at the helicity values, uh, they're pretty high. Uh, and again, this is zero to uh, one kilometer storm relative helicity. And uh, that certainly is supportive of some rotating updrafts. The question is, can you get something going out ahead of that squall line? It's possible, but typically at that hour of the day, it's not likely. So really our thinking has not changed and that the primary mode of severe weather will be from damaging straight line winds along the front. But with those numbers, you can't rule out the chance of a tornado. This is the wind field at, uh, let's see, 850 millibars, about 5,000 feet, the low-level jet. And the winds are screaming. That's an 80-knot jet just north of here, and the values are 60 to 70 knots over Alabama. And like we've talked about, it's not going to take a lot to transfer that down to the surface. And uh, that is easily the kind of wind that can knock down trees and power lines. And even before the storms arrive, it's going to be pretty windy. So, uh, again, you know, damaging straight-line wind is a real concern. And let's look at one more graphic. This is the uh, four-kilometer NAM valid Wednesday morning at uh, 6 o'clock. And it's a little faster, and it's got really storms out ahead of the main line. So, uh, you know, bottom line is our thinking's not changed much. If anything, we might, uh, you know, make it a bit slower, indicate the better chance of severe weather maybe 2 a.m. until 11 a.m. Wednesday, something like that. That's what we're thinking now. Uh, initially in northwest Alabama, then moving south and east, damaging straight line winds, the main threat. We can't rule out the chance of a tornado. So again, tomorrow night, batten down the hatches. Anything out in the yard that might blow away, get it uh, all nailed down. All right, Thursday, everything's gone, and uh, we're colder. Uh, I don't know if we can make it out of the 40s with numbers like that. That's a cold 1,035 millibar high over the plains. Uh, should be a sunny day and a cold day. And uh, Friday, we'll start the day probably at or just below freezing. And again, the high around 50. So uh, temperatures going below average for Thursday and Friday. Weekend Warriors, what do you say? This is Saturday, the 2nd of February. We've got a weak front north of here, but it's basically inactive. Uh, there might be a sprinkle with that Saturday night, but the chance is very small. Saturday should be partly sunny with highs in the 50s and a reinforcing surge of dry air Sunday, but no real air mass change. Temperatures where they should be, 50s during the day, 30s early in the morning. All right, let's go out there and look a little deeper into the land of voodoo, what do you say? This is valid the 9th of February. This is uh, uh, Saturday the 9th. Nice little batch of showers, maybe some thunder coming in here. And at the end of the forecast on the 13th, that's a cold-looking trough over the east. Although the western ridge is not overly impressive, still that would be pretty chilly with temperatures well below average out there at mid-February, if that happens to be correct. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this afternoon. We'll have notes on the blog next video here by 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. And don't forget to watch us on ABC 3340 News on the live stream or the television side at 4, 5, 6, and 10. Thanks for watching. Have a great evening and God bless. Hi, I'm Steve Sample with Bama Talk. Don't miss a single episode of Bama Talk Show available now on iTunes, Stitcher, or your favorite podcast app and on the web at bigbrainsmedia.com.